it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, we're gonna learn how to crochet this beautiful lemon tree infinity scarf. This is a beautiful lacy piece. Uh, we're gonna be doing some fans, but some very easy stitches, just some double crochet, single crochet, and some chains are all you'll need to know. And if you're not familiar with these stitches, we'll go through all of them together as well. Now this is a long loop, so it will stay on. Or when it's a little chillier, you can kind of double it up and make it into a very pretty cowl as well. Now our finished infinity scarf measures about seven inches across and it has a 68 inch circumference all the way around. Now we're gonna learn how to seam this later in the video, but you could also leave it unseamed and wear it like a traditional scarf as well. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle for weaving in your ends and seaming, we're gonna be using a tape measure and that will help you get the width and the length that you want. And I'll show you how to customize both of those things later on in the video. We're gonna be using a five millimeter H crochet hook. This is my Furl's Odyssey in the Peach. I'll put the link down below in a coupon code if you'd like to get one for yourself. The yarn we're gonna be using is um, a yarn from Hobie called Rainbow Eight Ply Sock Wool. I'm gonna be using two balls of this yarn for a total of 460 yards. So this is DK weight yarn. So 460 yards of DK weight yarn. Now specifically, the yarn I'm using is again, the rainbow eight ply sock wool. I'm using two balls of this. This is a three light on the yarn weight scale. So if you're looking for a yarn substitution, you can look at that or a DK weight. I'm gonna be using color 27, also called delicate yellow on their website. It's kind of like a buttery yellow, nice and soft for spring. And again, two balls of this and about 460 yards total. This is a, a wool polyamide blend yarn. And um, I'll put the link down below for this too if you'd like to look at it. It comes in a ton of other colors too. So that's all you need, so let's get started. All right, I have my yarn and my hook and we're ready to roll. Now I like to pull from the center and how I like to do that is sometimes it's hard to tell what the outside strand is and what the inside is. So, and they can get intertwined if you start pulling from the center right away. So I like to take this outermost piece here and just sort of wrap it up like this and get it way out of the way so it doesn't get tangled up with the other one and then just sort of like wrap it back in. And you can do, um, grab a cake cuff, which I use frequently, or you can carefully slip your label back on. And now that outer strand is sort of out of the way. Now to get the center pull, if you don't see the end right away, you can kind of like carefully look first and see if it's in there. If not, I take my fingers and I kind of have them connect in the middle and then slip your thumb in there and just try to pull like that very centermost piece you can feel and then grab a little bit to get started and you can sort of wind the excess if you had a little bit extra. Okay, so we're gonna begin with our starting chain and let me just zoom way, way in so you can see what I'm doing here. Now our stitch multiple is a multiple of eight plus two. So this is where you can customize the width of your cowl. You can make it as wide as you want. You can make it a shawl, you can make it really narrow. Um, but again, the multiple is eight plus two. If you're not familiar with this concept, just when you're doing your starting chain, you'll wanna go in groups of eight, eight plus eight plus eight plus eight until you get the width that you want and then add two more chains onto that, okay? So our starting chain, for the dimensions and this yarn size um, in the pattern is going to be um, eight plus two and we're gonna do a chain 42 to begin. So what you'll wanna do is grab your yarn, wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up that loop and tighten. Again, we're gonna do a starting chain of 42. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 40, 41, and 42. So here is our starting chain. Now you'll want your chain to be loose enough to work back into it, but not so tight um, that you can't, and it's gonna like kind of bring the, draw the edges in too much, but too loose and the bottom will look kind of loopy. So just uh, strike a happy medium there. And if your chain is too tight, which I know a lot of you ask me that, if uh, what to do if your chain's too tight, just go up a hook size for your chain and then go back down to the H for the rest of your project. 
Okay, so let's start on row one. We're gonna do, th I'm gonna show you how to do three rows total, and then rows two and three are the ones that we're gonna be repeating for the whole pattern. Okay, so row one is gonna kind of set us up. So what we're gonna do is in the sixth chain from the hook, this loop here does not count. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and six. In that sixth chain from the hook, we're going to work a double crochet chain one four times, okay? So to make a double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert the hook into that chain, bring up a loop, you'll have three loops on the hook. And I'm just gonna zoom in just a little bit more for you. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it to the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it to the last two loops. That's a double crochet and then chain one. And we're gonna do a that for a total of four times. So that was one set, then double crochet, chain one, that's the second set, double crochet, chain one, that's the third set, and a double crochet, chain one, that's the fourth set, okay? Then in that same chain, we're gonna work one more double crochet, just like that. Then we're gonna skip three chains, one, two, three, and in that next chain, work a single crochet. So insert the hook into that chain, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. Then we're gonna skip three chains again. One, two, three, and in that next chain, we're gonna do our double crochet chain one sets again, a total of four. So in that chain, double crochet, chain one, that's one, double crochet, chain one, that's two, double crochet, chain one, that's the third set, double crochet, chain one, that's the fourth set, and then grabbing my yarns rolling all around, and then in that same chain, work one more double crochet to kind of finish off that little fan. As you can see, we're creating some fans here. Then we're gonna skip three chains again, one, two, three, and in the chain after that, work a single crochet once again, just like that. Then we're gonna kind of repeat this all the way across, and we don't have a lot of width here, so not a, a ton of repeats. So skip three chains, one, two, three, and in the chain after that, work your double crochet chain one sets. So double crochet, chain one, that's one, double crochet, chain one, that's two, double crochet, chain one, that's three, double crochet, chain one, that's four. You can go back and check if you lose uh, count there. And then in the same chain, one more double crochet to kind of finish off that fan, okay? So then what we're gonna do is work, or actually skip three chains, one, two, three, and in the chain after that, work your single crochet Then skip three chains, one, two, three, and in the chain after that, work your double crochet chain ones. So double crochet, chain one, in that chain, that's one. Double crochet, chain one, that's the second one. Double crochet, chain one, that's the third one. Double crochet, chain one, that's the fourth one. And then one more double crochet in that same chain to finish off your little fan. We have some beautiful fans going across in that lovely yellow color. Let me just get a little bit more yarn here. Okay, skip three chains, one, two, three, and in the chain after that, work a single crochet once again. Those single crochets sort of tack down the ends of your uh, scallops you're creating and, and give some nice, um, you know, fans and, you know, delineate your fans a little bit. Okay. On our way to the end here, skip three chains and in the chain after that, work your next little fan. Double crochet, chain one, that's one. Double crochet, chain one, that's two. Double crochet, chain one, that's three. Double crochet, chain one, that's four. You can go one, two, three, four, just to double check. And then one more double crochet in that same chain to finish. 
Okay, and then you should have four chains left at the end of your row. So skip three chains, and in that very last chain, we're gonna work a single crochet to finish off row one, okay? So there you go. If you did the same number of chains and didn't change the multiples and did the same starting chain I did, you should have one, two, three, four, five fans across, okay? So let's move on to row two. What we're gonna do is we're going to turn our work and we're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip over that single crochet from the previous row and then we're going to skip one of these. Remember we did our double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and, and so forth. We're gonna skip one of those double crochets, the second double crochet, and then we're gonna work a single crochet in the center of this fan. So locate the center. When you look at it, you can kind of separate it from the sides here, um, and you'll get the hang of it the more you do. But the first couple of ones, you'll probably wanna like sort of look at it a little closely. But you'll wanna like look at your fan, and you're gonna skip those first two double crochets, and in that third one there, you're gonna do a single crochet. And you can kind of check your work by, look, there's one on either side, one on either side, and then there's the one in the middle. So that, that middle of that fan, that second, um, excuse me, one, two, third double crochet, the middle of that fan, we're gonna work a single crochet right in the center. Okay, so right in that stitch, insert your, insert your hook, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops to make your single crochet. Okay, and that's how you'll start it. Then what we're gonna do is chain three. One, two, three. And then we're gonna hop over to in between our two fans from the previous row. And remember we did a single crochet in the middle of those. So in that single crochet from the previous row, you're gonna work a double crochet right into that single crochet there. So right in the middle there, work a double crochet, just like that. You can kind of see it from the previous row. Chain three, one, two, three, and then you'll do the same thing you did with the other fan. And if you need to sort of open it up a little bit to see it, but right in that centermost stitch of your fan, work a single crochet. Then chain three, one, two, three, and then go in between the fans to that single crochet that you did in between the fans from the previous row and work a double crochet into that single crochet, okay? Chain three, one, two, three, and then we're going to go to our fan, go in the middle, find that middlemost stitch, so you can sort of like separate it out and work a single crochet, just like that, okay? Chain three, one, two, three, and then go in that single crochet in between the two fans and work a double crochet. Then chain three, one, two, three, and then go in the centermost stitch of the fan and work a single crochet right in the middle there. Chain three, one, two, three, go in between the fans, that single crochet, and work a double crochet into that. Chain three, one, two, three, and then work, separate your fan if you need to, find the middlemost stitch and work a single crochet right into that stitch, okay? Now it should look like that, sort of like framed uh, fans. And then to do the last part of our row here, we're going to work, we had our fan here, the last double crochet worked, you're gonna see like a chain right next to it. See off to the side here? You're gonna work a double crochet into that chain right beside that last double crochet you worked. So work a double crochet to finish the row. And row two is complete. It's starting to look really pretty, very lacy and kind of springy looking, I love it. Okay, moving on to row three. Now remember, rows two and three are what we'll repeat over and over. So for row three, what we're gonna do is we're going to chain one, and we're gonna turn our work, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip that double crochet that we just worked here on the end, 
And then what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna put a fan right on top of this fan. So that single crochet that we worked in the previous row, we're gonna do those fans like we did before. So we're gonna do four sets of double crochet chain ones and then one more double crochet, okay? And we'll do it together. So right in that single crochet, go double crochet, chain one, that's one, double crochet, chain one, that's two, double crochet, chain one, that's three, double crochet, chain one, that's four, and in that same stitch, double crochet once again, okay? So you can see we're having some fans that are gonna be lined up together, okay? Then what we're gonna do is in that double crochet from the previous row, it's really easy to see because it's right there in the middle, we're going to work a single crochet in the center of that. And then we're gonna to hop to the next fan and we have a little single crochet right in the middle of that fan. So what we're gonna do is do another fan. So once again, double crochet, chain one, that's one. Double crochet, chain one, that's two. Double crochet, chain one, that's three. Double crochet, chain one, that's four. Double crochet in the same stitch to finish off the row, okay? So you can see how our fans are starting to really nicely line up. It looks very pretty. Okay, hop to that double crochet from the previous row, work a single crochet right into that. Hop over to the fan and in that single crochet in the center of that fan from the previous row, we're gonna do our next fan. So double crochet, chain one, that's one. Double crochet, chain one, that's two. Double crochet, chain one, that's three. Double crochet, chain one, that's four. And then one more double crochet in that same stitch to finish off your fan. Hop over to that next double crochet right there in the middle. Super easy to see. Work a single crochet right into that stitch. Hop over to your next fan. Locate that single crochet that's perched right on top of that fan and work a double crochet, chain one. That's one. Double crochet, chain one. That's two. Double crochet, chain one. That's three. We get a little bit more yarn. Even though I did the center pull, I wrapped some of the excess around the front, so it's still spinning around. Okay, moving right along. Double crochet, chain one. That was the third one. Double crochet, chain one. That's the fourth one. And then one more double crochet in that same stitch. And there you go. All right, we are very close to the end here. Work a single crochet in that double crochet right there in the middle, those two fans. All right, let's work our last fan of this row. So find that single crochet perched on top of that fan and work a double crochet, chain one. That's one. Double crochet, chain one. That's two. Double crochet, chain one. That's three, the third one. Double crochet, chain one. That's the fourth set on our fan here. And then one more double crochet to finish off the fan. Okay, then what we're gonna do is to finish off the row, we have this big old turning chain right all along the side here, you can see it. What we're gonna do is look at our chains and count the third chain up, one, two, three. In that third chain up, we're going to work a single crochet. So just go right into that third chain up with your hook, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops to finish. And there you are, we had We've done row one, row two, and row three, and we're off to a great start. We have some pretty fans. And to move forward, again, like I mentioned, we're going to repeat rows two and three, two and three, two and three, over and over and over again until your cowl is as long as you'd like it to be. Now we're gonna be seaming the ends. So um, just keep working until it's long enough to go around you. Now it could be a snug cowl, or it could be long and loose. It's really up to you and what you prefer and what you like to wear. 
Um, I will say that, um, you know, I'm going to work until my yarn runs out, basically. So mine's going to be a little bit kind of loose and drapey. And I love that look because it's kind of like springy and uh, we have like an open uh, fan stitch here. But really do it however you like. And it's very versatile. So just keep going, repeating rows two and three, two and three, over and over and over again. I'm going to get some length on this. And when we return, um, we're going to kind of finish this off. off seam it up, weave the ends in, etc. So if you need to back up and watch rows two and three over and over, you can do that. There's also a slow motion feature on YouTube as well. So just, um, you know, if you need to go back and rewatch any of it, feel free to do that. So let's keep going with rows two and three and we'll rejoin in just a minute. All right, just coming up to the end of the last row with our last stitch. And now our piece is done. So when you are crocheting yours, when you come up to the end, you'll want to make sure you end on row two. That's the row that has the, the chains and the single crochets and the double crochets, not the fan row, the other row, because that will give you a nice squared off edge that will match um, the starting edge more. It'll be more squared off like where we began. So at this point, you can just, for uh, your infinity scarf, you could just leave it unseamed and wear it like a traditional scarf, which is lovely. Or you can do what I'm gonna show you and seam the two ends together so it, it, so it does create the infinity scarf, okay? So we have a couple of things we have to do before our scarf is finished. Um, what we're gonna do now is cut uh, the yarn, but we're gonna leave a nice long tail, probably about 24 inches or so so that we can um, seam it. We're gonna use this tail to seam our work, okay? So about 24 inches, give or take. And this is more than enough. You probably won't use all this, but I like to give myself a little extra just to make sure. You don't wanna cut it too short. So then what we're gonna do is wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That long tail, we're gonna bring it all the way through and then pull it tightly. And then what we can do is we're going to get situated here so we can get ready to seam this. So let me get my tail out of the way. You can zoom out a little bit so you can see better. And then we're going to grab our two ends. And you can put a little twist in your scarf if you want to, but I like to just do a cylinder, okay? Just like a straight-sided cylinder. Okay, now, when you crocheted your piece, when the scallops or the fans faced you, that was the, the front of them, the right side of the work. The inside is gonna be the back of these fans that you created, okay? So you sorta of wanna turn it inside out and bring the two ends together. And then you can grab your tapestry needle and just get your, your tail all situated. I'm gonna just take a little bit off mine. Mine's super, super long. Okay, and then we're gonna just thread our tapestry needle with a little tail. And then you're gonna hold your ends together, you're gonna sandwich them. Now we have an end down here and that's okay, we're gonna deal with that in a minute. So take your um, two edges and you're gonna line them up the best you can. So when you line them up though, be very careful because when you seam them, if you do a really good job lining them up, um, see these center stitches in between your fans? We want them to run in a, in a straight, uninterrupted line, okay? So when you seam, make sure everything's lined up very carefully. If you want to use some stitch markers to sort of hold everything together while you sew and so things won't shift, um, that's helpful too. So I'm gonna line up um, my edges together and you wanna get those fans uh, lined up as well, okay? So go ahead and get your first stitch in there to sort of tack things down. And we're gonna go into both layers of our little sandwich. And we're just gonna go through like that. And just make sure you can kind of flip it over to inspect. And we're just gonna go through and I wanna line up, see that single crochet at the top of my fan? I wanna line up that with the center of this fan just to make sure so you can sort of like pinch that with your fingers and then go ahead and start seaming now when you seam each layer you want to go through both loops of each layer so when I go through let me zoom in so you can see better when I go through this bottom layer I'm picking up 
two loops. When I go through this top layer, I'm also picking up two loops, okay? And we're doing a whip stitch, which is a very um, invisible uh, stitch. And we're doing this inside out, like I mentioned before. And we're using our tail, which is the same as our yarn from our piece, so that it'll blend really well. All right, now I'm at like where those two fans line up. So I'm just gonna go very carefully, making sure that they're lined up. This particular seam, cause it's lacy and lots of fans and things going on, you wanna just go nice and slow and make sure you stay lined up. It'll be totally worth it at the end when you have this one uninterrupted looking piece, okay? All right, so now I'm in between my fans and I've located this double crochet from the other side of my sandwich. And I'm just gonna kind of pinch those together, just making sure everything lines up. And I would, every so often, maybe like a, every couple of inches that you're seaming like this, take your piece and flip it over and make sure, see my fans are lined up, make sure everything's all lined up, okay? So I'm gonna to continue to seam this piece across, and when we rejoin, we'll wrap it up at the other end here. All right, we're just coming up to the end of our seam here. And then when you're done, what you're gonna do is take your needle out, and if you have a tail here, you can just tie them right together. If not, you can just put a little knot in it like you normally would, but I have happen to have a tail here. So we're just gonna tie those together, put a secure knot on there. And again, um, as we carefully seamed across, we lined everything up. Um, before I tied mine, I did check mine a second ago. So our seam looks really nice, and then when you turn it right side out, see how it just continues across. It looks very nice, okay? So grab your scissors and your needle again, because we're gonna weave in some of these ends here. So grab one of your tails, and we're still, um, having our piece inside out here so we can do this. So just go along these back loops while your scarf is still inside out. And we're just gonna go take our tail with our needle in one direction, go about an inch or two in, and then come back in the other direction with your tail. And then you'll just repeat for any other tails you have. So go look around on your scarf and see if you can find any other tails. And then when you get your end woven, I come back in the other direction just to kind of lock that tail into place, give it a little snip, and then repeat for your other tails. Okay, so all of our ends are woven in and our piece looks just beautiful. So that is how you crochet the Lemon Tree Infinity Scarf. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflex video updates. Thanks again.